Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good evening, people across the globe who would be joining in for this program. What a day for Indian Cat Fancy, where we are going to have uh, the CFA chairperson and CFA president first time ever to come on board and talk on the platform of FCI. And as Alan mentions, is that is this is in his knowledge, uh, this is the first time a CFA president is coming live ever. So uh, I, I don't have words to thank Daryl uh, for coming in and accepting our invitation. I am Sake Pathan. I'm the president of the Feline Club of India and the Cat Fanciers Alliance of India, known as CFAI, the first registered club with CFA. And we still hold strong. Uh, this was done around three years back, where the Cat Fancy took a different turn in the country. And uh, this, this marked as a milestone in the, uh, in the knowledge and the understanding of people and the seriousness about cats that we hold today. So this was the first step. Uh, none to, uh, none, 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 uh, we, I would like to take this opportunity to thank none other, none other than uh, Mr. Alan Raymond. Uh, Mr. Alan Raymond is a well-known uh, personality in India. And in India, he does not require any uh, introduction. But I would like to introduce, uh, introduce him briefly that he is a liaison for India and also a CFA Albright judge. Alan has been judging for the last 40 years. And we have been fortunate to bring him to the country numerous times so having said that i would not uh, take more time i would like to bring in daryl on screen hello daryl hello how's everybody it's an honor to be here it's an honor for all of us to have have you on screen and on the, our platform um i would like to briefly introduce daryl uh daryl uh, is the president of the cfa he has been elected uh very now, it's, it's been not too long that he has been elected as a president of CFA. So first and foremost, congratulations from India, uh, Darren. And we believe in your vision. And uh, we are there to support you in any cause, uh, any time that you lead as, as a country. That you can take a word from us. So talking about Darren, born in 1951 uh, in a very rural area in Missouri. He was raised on a farm and developed as a great love for animals. Uh, he spent four years in US Air Force from 1970 to 1974. After his honorable discharge from the Air Force, he attended an associate degree in nursing. He continued an educational career path and attended a two-year program in nurse anesthesia. He began his career as certified registered nurse anesthesia in 1981. He later went on and completed his undergraduate degree in nursing and received a minor in business management from Webster University and Webster Groove, Missouri. In 1984, Beth, uh, he attended first CFA cat show. Shortly thereafter, uh, he purchased his first Abyssinia from Leela Ripi, went dicatry. He fell in love with Blue Abbey at the first time uh, and first show. It was uh, his goal to produce high quality abbeys that could compete uh, across all registered bodies. In 1980, most of the dilute Abyssinian had white undercoat. His mission was to produce dilute Abyssinians with co correct undercoat color. It took 15 years for him to accomplish this. Uh, he became a judge in American Cat Fancies Association in 1989 and judged there for five years. In June 1995, uh, he applied to CFA judging program and became a short hair apprentice judge in February 1996. During his tenure in CFA, he has served as show manager, entry clerk, ring clerk, master clerk, and other duties to help CFA, a club. He has served many years on the CFA board of direction, uh, directors as a director of large during the past CFA election. He submitted a name for the office of CFA president, a position that he have just recently assumed. Uh, he's very supportive on the advancement of CFA into the future. Um, we have to make sure that he uh, advance and CFA advances a highly technological position and want to CFA use the resources of the genetic developments that have been made during the last 10 to 15 years. Um, CFA supports the welfare of all cats. Yeah, CFA licenses high quality shows and train judges to the highest standard possible. You also value uh, uh, the pedigree registration system to maintain a very large and accurate record of the ancestry to the pedigree cats. So welcome, Daryl. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. Yeah. So uh, we have one more guest today. I would take this opportunity to introduce Kenny. Kenny Curley. Uh, Hello, everyone. Hello, Kelly. It's an uh, honor to have you. Honor to be here. So Kenny Curl uh, uh, is a CFA Albright judge, entered during program 1983, a breeder of Persian minx and American shorthair. Uh, he has a CFA registered category, Curly Curls, in 1973. So this is the time he has been involved with CFA. That's quite some time, uh, Kenny, I would say. Presently, uh, he is a CFA Southern Regional Director 7, International Division Liaison to the CFA Board and Chair of AWA CSA, which includes the country of India too. CCW Liaison to the CFA Board and a member of the CFA Executive Committee he has been married for 47 years with four children and seven grandchildren. So that's quite an accomplishment, Kenny. And uh, welcome both of you. So we would like to, so just quickly, uh, you, you may take uh, a minute or so, Daryl, and uh, say something about what you think about India, and then we move forward with some uh, discussions. Great. Thank you, Saki. Uh, I think CFA has always, uh, for many years anyway, has had really an eye on the international division, uh, making sure that we recognize cats globally uh, and that we transition uh, from uh, a U.S.-based registry to a worldwide registry. Uh, what what uh, the breeds that we accept and the colors we accept within those breeds sometimes causes issues, uh, but we've been able to circumnavigate those issues over many years. Uh, so our goal is to uh, maintain a high quality uh, registry and uh, we've done that uh, I, uh, in doing a little bit of research on the history of this organization, the International Division. I came across a PowerPoint presentation that was presented in the World Cat Congress in 2014. And at that time, uh, we had uh, over 2 million uh, records in our pedigree database. So I'm sure that we have a lot more than that now. So hopefully one of these days I'll be able to touch base and see how many registries we actually have. So uh, I'm happy to have Kenny on board uh, for the International Division. Uh, I was uh, the chair of the International Division uh, during Pam Delabar's tenure. And uh, during that uh, time, uh, we were able to get uh, Europe uh, uh, accepted as a region in the CFA, and that's uh, something that I was really, really happy to accomplish. Yeah, thank you, Daryl. Uh, Kenny? Yeah, now in addition to that, um, we uh, when I first got uh, into the international division, I worked closely with Daryl as far as the uh, acceptance of Europe as a region. And then we started expanding in other parts of the world, in particular in the Middle East, where we've been very successful. Uh, we registered in several different countries, over 15 different clubs. Uh, and um, they even they don't call India the Middle East. So India is a separate entity. It's away from that, but still under my purview. So it's part of Asia West, if you will. And uh, I do have a, a liaison specifically for India because of its immense size and population, and it's obviously love for cats. And uh, we're pretty much getting started there, and with the help such as uh, with clubs as yours, if we can garner enough interest, we, we look to have a successful relationship uh, with the country of India. And But we want to follow the rules. We want, of course, have a good relationship with all the clubs, and this is a a fabulous way to start. Your hospitality has been immeasurable. Thank you. And likewise, it has been, uh, with CFA to India, uh, it has always been a love child for CFA. Uh, India has always been. So, Daryl, I would uh, take this opportunity for you to introduce people to uh, CFA and, you know, from let it come from the horse's mouth that, you know, uh, how it started and uh, what is the vision and what uh, is the what is the demographic and geographic diversity that CFA holds today. So yep. 
I want I want to start out by giving just a brief history of our organization, uh, and then move into uh, a little bit of the explanation of the International Division Committee. So uh, CFA in 1906 uh, broke away uh, from their with their ties with the American Cat Association. So in 1906, our first year, we uh, had uh, two shows that year: one in Buffalo, New York, and one in Detroit, Michigan. So CFA uh, was founded as a not-for-profit organization and were incorporated under those rules in the state of New York. And so the objective uh, is the welfare of all cats. Uh, we want to uh, promote and improve uh, breeders and their activities. Uh, we uh, register cats. Uh, we promote rules uh, and govern uh, the go rules governing uh, production of cat shows. And uh, we want to pr uh, promote the uh, interest uh, of the breeders and the exhibitors. So actually, CFA started out uh, in, in uh, basically a uh, kitchen tabletop. And uh, so over the years, uh, CFA has really, really grown and taken off on size. It wasn't until 1965 that CFA rented its first office space. Uh, in 1980, they purchased their first office. In 1988, uh, they purchased land and built a new office. Uh, then in 2011, uh, we moved to Alliance, Ohio. So uh, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of growth and work over the years uh, from 1906, and uh, we keep expanding. So uh, many years ago, before there was an international division committee, uh, our president, Dick Gephardt, at the time uh, in cooperation with several other people, Betty O'Brien, Wayne Park, who worked a lot in Japan uh, to get Japan uh, up registering cats. So it wasn't until 1986 that Don Williams, who was the president at the time, formed the International uh, Division Committee. And the first chair of that committee was Vaughn Barber. And those of us who've been in the cat fancy for a few years, uh, remember Von Barber. He was one of the most kind, gentle men uh, you would ever meet. Uh, Don Swanson uh, served the stint. Uh, uh, Von Barber came back on. Uh, Edna Field was a chair appointed uh, by Craig Rothermill. Um, then Jerry Hamza uh, came in. Uh, Pam Delabar uh, uh, was a, uh, the president prior to Jerry Hamza. And Pam appointed me as the chair of the International Division Committee, and I was in charge of that committee the whole time Pam was president. Uh, when Jerry took over, I served about a year, and then uh, we got uh, Region 9 accepted as a region, and uh, Dick Kalmar took over the committee, and then Wayne Harding was added. Now Penny Curley is added, and I have added Russell Webb and Bob Zenda uh, on as chairs for China and the Asia area. So uh, we have a lot of work still to do. Uh, we uh, are uh, out. We, we want to improve our breeds. Uh, we want to make sure our registrations are correct. And I'm really excited about the potential uh, for the uh, uh, Cat Fancy in India. I, I think uh, as anytime we have any emerging Cat Fancy in a foreign country, uh, there's always uh, rules and regulations of that foreign country that we have to take into consideration. And uh, and so uh, we, we work together with the clubs in that area, and we put my people like Kenny in charge of that area so that he can uh, work with and instruct the clubs on uh, and answer questions when those questions come up. So uh, I'm really uh, looking forward. I think uh, India, we have a great potential. Uh, in India because there's a lot of cats in India and uh, they have a very well organized dog fancy there and uh, so I'm very very excited that CFA will take the lead and uh, we can get uh, uh, the promotion of the pedigree cats uh, in India. Yeah. Any your views on the international division and how it has been uh, Till date and what's the future? Well, I mean, the future is unlimited. Uh, unfortunately, you know, in this uh, crazy year, it's, things have actually pretty much slowed down to a crawl. But it, what uh, programs such as this keep people interested, and so do virtual shows and things of that nature. 
the thing is, as, as soon as things loosen up, um, we've already made great strides uh, from where we began. And uh, like I said, the Middle East has grown exponentially. Um, we are reaching out um, to South America. We've already got one club in South America and we're looking to grow there as well. But we're still facing many challenges. And as Daryl said, there in each country, um, you have different rules, regulations, and customs uh, that need to be taken into account. So we need to react to them so that those who want to help us in these countries can help us flourish there. And um, we have that in mind every time that we go into a new country, if they have a certain rule or regulation that we must follow, we do just that. So uh, I'm excited personally, particularly about India, not necessarily because of the numbers, in getting their pedigree registrations, but we also have uh, another registration body with household pets and uh, another one called CCW, which is the Companion Cat World, which yeah. is uh, it's a, a lesser uh, registration type of thing. It's very inexpensive and it does introduce them on the various, of uh, the very groundest level of the uh, CFA uh, in, into what CFA has to offer. The organization is highly organized, highly professional, and uh, we try to act accordingly when dealing with new and emerging countries. But we need to make sure that we can communicate uh, in languages that they can uh, understand so that there's no you know, uh, misinformation that's flying around. But that's gonna be a challenge in any emerging country, and it has been in some that we've already uh, been recognized in. So that's you know our job, and we're up to it, and uh, we certainly appreciate, obviously, the interest that India is giving uh, CFA. Uh, I, per, I, being a lifer of CFA, I know no other, and but I you know I appreciate all the other organizations um, in the world too, because in in my mind, not one cat fancy can rule the world, but I think we can at least have one cat feet fancy be the leader. And with leaders like Daryl and, and who we've had in the past and the people that we have working for our, our organization, uh, I think nothing but good things are going to be happening in the future uh, for our animals. And, uh, but, you know, our, our constitution starts out with the health and welfare of all cats. And we must keep that in mind as we move forward. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Thank you Daryl, for your insights. And, um, uh, Having talked about the uh, what are the possibilities, and let's 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 take an opportunity to uh, because India being a new uh, player into a game which has started say 120 years before in the uh, US. So as an organized as, as a country which has just stepped into cat fancy, what would you like to uh, tell our audiences or tell our cat fanciers in India that you know how can they uh, manage and take this opportunity? because there is a building and budding cat fancy in the country. So what, what would you recommend our new cat owners uh, to be a part of uh, the emerging market, which is India is called as the largest emerging market in the country. At the moment, when you talk about the numbers that we're going through, uh, we are like three, 3 million cats which are there in the country uh, at the moment. So, you know, it's a huge, huge potential uh, hobby and passion which is coming up. So Daryl, what would you like to tell our audiences back home? So I, I would like to uh, 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 convey to all the people, uh, you have to study your breed if you have a purebred, okay? Uh, understand uh, the ins and outs of the standard. Uh, you have to learn grooming techniques. Uh, if you're going to breed your cat, you need to understand all the, the potentials and the pitfalls. Uh, this is not always glamorous. Uh, bad things happen sometimes uh, when, when we uh, are breeding animals. And so uh, uh, while there's a lot of joy in uh, uh, producing beautiful cats uh, and the pride you get from producing those cats and showing them in a ring, uh, you need to understand the rules of competition in shows. And I always uh, like to uh, say, you know, uh, be a supporter of your breed. And even if, if the judge doesn't pick your cat, go to the final uh, and, and celebrate the win with your potential cat competitors. So uh, anyway, uh, 
it's uh, when when something new is like this, uh, education. I cannot emphasize uh, that education uh, on the club's part plays an essential role in the success of the campaigns in the emerging countries. So that's my advice. Uh, educate yourself, uh, present your cat in the best possible condition, and uh, and and above all, uh, this is a fun hobby. Enjoy. It needs, if it if it stops it being fun, then we don't need to be breeding cats. So uh, maintain that fun atmosphere in the cat shows. Uh, be welcoming, and you can also be an educator when people come in and they ask you questions then you can share your knowledge and your information base with the potential uh, new customers that come into the cat shows. If, if I may add also another way you can get involved, uh, if you can't directly join, say, your club, Saqib, uh, you, if you have 10 or more people that are interested in using the resources that the Cat Fanciers Association has, uh, you can apply to become a Cat Fanciers Association club. Um, that normally is the first step in some of these countries, such as yours and what you're doing, that inspires people you know, to get more involved with the cat fancy, particularly from a pedigree and breeding standpoint. Um, you, we, have, we have clubs that never produce a show, that are, that are just breed clubs that support, as Daryl says, the health and vitality and the progression of certain breeds. So getting a cat club together and working through the resources that our organization has to offer is an excellent way to start your education. And there's a lot of resources on our CFA website that you can find, including our show rules, our show standards, and things of that nature, and even how to put on a show. So there's a plethora of information that is, is available to you. And as a club, you'd have a little larger voice and a collective voice. And Generally, if you work together with people, you you tend to be more successful. So, Sakir, uh, perspective of uh, our point of view about CFA uh, emerging into India, uh, can you share with us uh, maybe some roadblocks or some pitfalls or uh, things that we can do uh, to encourage uh, people in India and? Uh, to also uh, just your point of view on uh, what, what may need to be done to make CFA successful in India. <clears throat> I would like to take Kenny's point uh, because when we thought of having cat fancy in India, this was somewhere in late 2015, where uh, and in early 2016, when I happened to contact uh, Mr. Alan Raymond uh, about you know how we can initiate with activities of CFA in the country. So uh, after seeing what is happening in Southeast Asia, uh, what what we thought is the you know uh, uh, India is nowhere uh, as compared to even the Southeast Asian countries. Leave it affair. Uh, leave it ahead. Uh, uh, Europe and US. Okay, so now uh, what we thought is that you know this gap gap needs to be filled, and we don't want to invest another 20, 25 years to reach where our other fellow neighboring countries are. So that gap was filled by uh, education. So education acted like a catalyst for us uh, with an uh, with 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 an onset and inception of FCI that we did uh, two years uh, before. So we have had around 90 conventions in the country so conventions are like a knowledge based activity that we do uh, in which we would bring in international experts uh, expert judges ellen has been a great support and other fellow cfa people who came down in india try to promote and uh, make people understand about the breeds, the color, the coat, and all the sort of division that is there, why one should breed. We also happen to have a clerking school in uh, India back in 2018. So this, this uh, educative uh, onset that we had, so uh, like Kenny mentioned, it should not be a breeding club. So we understood this uh, thing on, with the onset of time. We started educating people, then put them into the uh, show ground, and we had uh, education on part of breeding, education on, on the part of neutering cats, medical science, uh, the aspect of, of cat showing, cat breeding. And also when it come to, uh, came down to showing, we always had a grooming class or grooming school in that particular city uh, 15 to 20 uh, days before 
the show is being taken place. So it give our cat owners an onset, an idea that you know how the cat fancy should be, how you should show and present cats. Uh, talking about cat fancy in India with the team that has been managing things for last three to four years, uh, I, I'm, I'm proud to say that we have our presence in 32 cities in the country. I'm also proud to say that you know with the geographical diversity that this uh, club and this team can hold, there is no other club in the country which can, uh, in the world which can have that kind of diversity. And we have right people who are working with us, right people who are working for us. So this is how it's easier for uh, us to manage things on ground uh, because India comes as a very diverse country. We have different linguistic groups. We have different mindset of people. So when you have people on ground, you can always work out uh, the strategy. You can do brainstorming sessions with them and you can come up with different strategies in different locations. So this has been an advantage to India and advantage to our team. We also have a dedicated scientific panel. We have a dedicated veterinary panel. So the scientific panel will work in, we work very closely with IISC Bangalore, which is Indian Institute of Science. It is one of the top 100 uh, scientific institutes globally and number one in India. So we do a lot of anatomical, morphological, gene pool tracking, genetical fingerprinting, DNA testing, this kind of uh, aspects. And talking about FCI, uh, it's been, it's, it's the, we, from the day one, we wanted to have microchipping done. Uh, because the problem here was, as the cat fancy exploded, uh, the immediate problem that we that we saw was inbreeding and line breeding in cats, and it was going haywire. Okay, so now when the cats are microchipped and over 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 fifty thousand cats in the country are microchipped, people know what they are breeding. People know what they have to choose as the breeding program, and not to uh, not to produce defective kittens uh, health wise. You know how how deadly it could be to cat fancy, and it could. And the uh, and and the motivation of the breeders and where the breeders will play the most important part. So this has been a few efforts from our side. The roadblocks that I see at the moment is uh, we would we are we, we are working on education, uh, even doing around 90 conventions in over 40 cities uh, across north, south, east, west, and central zones in the country. Uh, there are still a lot of things to be done because uh, it's like we are uh, we were at kindergarten. Uh, and we need to go to the university. So it's a big process. Uh, and we would always like your support. I would always I need your support as the leader of the cat fancy. And Kenny always said, and you always mentioned this thing that, you know, there can be different cat fancies and we can co coexist. There cannot be one single cat fancy in the world, but one can lead and other can uh, and, and can set an example and other, others can follow on the footstep. So this is something India is trying to do. So uh, from, from the perspective that, we are here and from the horse's mouth if you can ask me i would answer that you know we would like a lot of support on the educative programs that cfa is looking forward to run there are a lot of fantastic online activities that we see that cfa is doing to help people people promote people engage into uh, into quality breeding as well as quality cat keeping so that's a request from our end to you Dani. okay well we uh we have several education programs and we uh, with the uh, COVID-19 shutting down most of our cat fancy around the world, uh, we have gone to uh, a lot of virtual meetings and uh, our board meetings now are uh, on Zoom. Uh, but we have like an upcoming uh, clerking school uh, for anybody that's been to the cat shows in India. Uh, you can sign up for that and attend the clerking school. Uh, Dan Baudry is the chair of the, the uh, clerking program. Uh, also, a, a, a new emerging, Kenny mentioned the companion cat world. And uh, this, I think, has uh, got the potential to be a really, really uh, newly uh, developed program so that, uh, you know, you can uh, get your cat uh, recognized, uh, get a certificate, get a badge. There are several different things that they will give you uh, uh, if you uh, register your cat in the companion cat world. And uh, so uh, we, we've always got, uh, we have a lot of smart people at CFA. And uh, so I, my, one of my, well, I have a couple of objectives when I decided I wanted to run for a CFA. And that is uh, that we need to uh, modernize a CFA a little bit more. We've got so much uh, new development of apps 
uh, are like the thing of the future. So everything's going to be done on apps, I, I predict. And uh, so uh, I, I recently appointed a new committee to look into, uh, uh, into things like that. And Leanne Rupi will be uh, the chair of that. And I notified the board that I'd ask her to do that. Uh, so we've got a lot of really, really smart people around uh, willing to work and advance CFA into the future. And the other thing that uh, I really hope that uh, the organization uh, we'll get a little bit more involved in. Uh, we have so much research uh, and scientific uh, stuff being promoted uh, in the world of the cat genome and genetics and how things uh, are advancing there. And uh, so uh, a lot of uh, uh, some of the genetic stuff that we learn uh, is theory. Uh, it's not been proven. They can't find the gene like where the silver gene is. But uh, uh, you know, they're working on that. And so I think it won't be too long uh, until we'll, uh, we'll have some scientific evidence of how uh, the inhibitor gene works uh, and how it works in the different color patterns. So uh, uh, being a nurse, I was always interested in science. And when I got into cats, that, that uh, uh, even piqued my interest a little bit more. And so uh, I, I constantly read uh, about uh, uh, developments in genetics. So uh, anyway, those are just a couple of things that, that I hope that we can advance DFA uh, into the future with. And uh, of course, we can spread the cat fancy around the world. We want everybody uh, uh, to love cats uh, and to make and it's not breeding is not for everyone. Uh, it does fill a niche for uh, some people. And so those are the people we want to nourish and grow and turn into valuable cat fanciers into the future. Very well said. Uh, Kenny, your outlook on this and uh, specifically about the division that you are holding at the moment? Um, you know, I've, I've been very pleased, particularly in the last two years. Uh, we went from one, two active clubs uh, in the Middle East to we were up to 15 at one point since I think we're at 14 right now. But uh, yeah, I think club growth is vital because it does get more people more actively interested in, in, uh, in cats. And uh, I started out, uh, my first cat was just a household pet, just something that I got down the street and Finally went to a cat show and just seeing that living art on the table was enough to sell me uh, with my wife and uh, we took off from there. It, it, it's a very, very difficult uh, road to, to, to take. Uh, it has its highs and lows, as Daryl had said earlier. The rewards, though, risk rewards, I think the rewards outweigh because of the beauty that you can actually produce. You have to have a goal. Uh, and then there are those people that are ardent cat fanciers that have never bred a cat in their life, and they simply have a household pet or a pet that lives at home. It becomes part of their family. And that's, you know, Daryl mentioned again, the companion cat world. That's such an ideal way to honor your cat, just to get involved with that. And you can always keep your options open, uh, particularly in your country, because you have so many cat lovers. If you do decide to get into a, a some sort of a breeding aspect, you've already got a leg up. You'll be able to educate yourself on how cat shows work because we allow those cats to be shown at, at CFA events. And uh, so there are many ways that you can actually enter in it. And we have lots and lots of resources and a lot of people ready and willing and able to help. And uh, as I said, that's uh, when we, before we started, I mean, Alan is, is so vital to me because of his interest and it's because of his uh, inspiration that he's already, uh, it's already been reflected in, in your uh, uh, commitment uh, to what's going on. So, I mean, I couldn't be more proud to know you. I'm very, very excited, even more excited now than I was, say, a year ago as to our prospects because it seems like we're doing it the right way. We want to do it under the proper rules. And we'd like to have somebody take the lead. So with you and Alan on board and hopefully more clubs coming in, I think we can get this accomplished in positive fashion. 
Yeah, Alan has always been a great support, and uh, I won't agree more to you that he has been really very vital to India and Indian cat fancy. And the guidance uh, that we got uh, in different uh, steps was uh, significant and important at that particular time to set those kind of milestones and to set new goals. So that has been his uh, encouragement, and it's always been um, a great support to have Alan on board uh, to do uh, activities related to cat fancy in India. So uh, gentlemen, uh, I would really like to thank you for joining in and uh, uh, th uh, thank you for uh, extending your hands and taking out uh, time from your busy schedule that you guys run in. I know Daryl, you have been working on so many projects. I know Kenny, you have been working on so many projects and still um, uh, sparing time for this activity in a new country like India would motivate a lot of cat fanciers in the country. So, and across the globe uh, where uh, CFA is stepping its first foot. So thank you everybody. And thank you, thank you everybody for joining in. Thank you everybody for joining in across the globe. And Daryl, I could not be more uh, proud that, you know, finally we could have you on our platform. Thank you so much. It's been an honor. Thank you again, Sakib. My best to everybody in India. Yes, good luck. Everybody. Thank you, everybody. Bye -bye. Thank you. And uh, uh, it, it, it's such an honor to have both of these gentlemen on the day of World Cat Day. It, it's, it's, it's celebrated as an international cat day. And uh, Daryl and Kenny, you would be proud to know that we just summed up maybe 30 minutes before our session started, a first virtual cat show in which actual judging happened across the camera. So they, it was not a photography judging. It was a judging based on the video. And Sandra, uh, who Kenny knows very closely, and I think Daryl, you also know her very pretty yeah. closely. Yeah. So she was a judge, uh, one of the judge on the panel, and uh, how wonderfully these guys did the job. And we, it took around two, two hours for us to judge over 80 cats, which were finalized. Uh, so we had over 400 cats, and we screened them in two uh, different uh, sets was 200 and then we got in more 80 cats to be shown on the day of World Cat Day. So it has been a busy week for all of us and uh, happy International Cat Day to uh, both of you and happy International Cat Day to all the audiences who has been joining in. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy World Cat Day, everyone. Thank you very much, Keith. Thank you. We'll take your leave. And thank you, Cat Fanciers in India and across the globe for joining in and we would be very proud to have some big activities coming in on, uh, on, on, a, on a much streamlined, on an educative platform in the country. So thank you all. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you, Kenny.